A lot of people think that you need a lot of drums to make a lot of different sounds. And it's true, if you have a bunch of different drums, you can have a bunch of different sounds right in front of you. But depending on how versatile your ear is, you can get a lot of sounds out of one drum, especially a versatile drum like a superphonic. Most any quality snare drum you find these days is gonna have a lot of really usable sounds in it. This particular by Ludwig is the most recorded type of drum there is in terms of snare drums. The variety of recordings that this type of drum has made uh, cannot be overstated. Everything from James Brown, Steve Gadd, everything, Vinnie Colaiuta loves them, everybody loves them. They're, they're the, the gold standard. And the reason they're the gold standard is because they make a really, easy to record sound. They make a really comfy feeling backbeat to your hand. If you can use your ear and get a sense of what different tunings are gonna get you, you can get a huge variety of things, almost anything that you'd want out of this one drum. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna take one drum and we're gonna go to three tunings that I use a lot. Right now, uh, this has fresh heads on it. 10 mil coated batter, in this case, uh, an Evans UV-1, and a three mil snare side, also by Evans. Any brand will do, but you know, this is what we're working with here. This is medium tuning, with the wires fairly tight, but not choked. With one tuning, you can get into adjusting the snare wires for more tone or for more articulation if we loosen them up. It gets a lot breathier. This is on the high side of medium. This will work for most anything that you might find yourself doing. And if you want to branch out, let's start by going down. We're going to go way down. All right, now we're way, way down. My favorite analogy for this uh, was someone referring to it as the sound of a baseball bat hitting a wedding cake. It's lower batter for sure, super low. And the snare side is down too. It's not super floppy, but there's actually a little wrinkle next to one of the lugs in the bottom head right now. And the idea behind this is sustain. Because when there's sustain in the snare drum, that's how you get a fat sound. A fat sound is longer, and so you need the drum to work with you and give you back that energy instead of just stifling it into one short shot. Now, this sounds pretty wild by itself. But there's still good sensitivity in there. And then the last ingredient for this sound is the wallet. It sounds almost like it's got reverb built into it. You hear the attack and then that little follow behind. Now when you go to a low snare side head, you have to be careful not to make the wires too tight because you will run into problems with the wires choking the drum and you get this kind of thing. wrong with that but it's there's no sustain there and if you're already going down to this level there's no sense choking off all that beautiful thud that comes out of it that's pretty big for a five inch deep drum let's go the other way let's see how much of a of a magnum we can make out of this thing let's go real high
All right, we are all the way the other way now. The batter head has gone up several full turns of each key. I brought the, the snare side up too, but not that much. Just maybe three quarters of a turn, maybe a whole turn. I mean, you can see how it sounds, touch it, see what it feels like. The span of usable tensions for the snare side, I feel like is a little bit narrower. You can really go super far one way or the other with the batter side. The snare side, I don't know. You can try different things, but I don't really bring it that far from medium soft to medium hard. I don't ever really go tabletop tight with it. Sometimes for fun, it can be interesting to tune it crazy low, like really wrinkly, or take some of the, the tuning pegs out of the snare side. I've heard of people doing that to just get kind of an effect. But now, same drum, same heads, tuned up in sort of Stuart Copeland land. It's a lot louder. But since we didn't jack up the bottom head, it still feels good to play. It doesn't feel like a tabletop to hit. And when you play harder in the center of the drum, you still get a sense of playing into it and the drum resonating under the stick. And you need that bottom head not too tight so that it can move enough to throw those wires away and then have them come back and sizzle a little bit. This is also, in this range, going to give you a lot of articulation at the edge of the head. I mean, that's right at the edge. These are Pure Sound Custom Pros, you know, 20 strand steel, similar to what you'd find on most drums you'd buy in the store. Nothing crazy, just tuning and paying attention to evenness, how the heads are getting along, making sure that you don't over tighten the wires and try to picture a sound in your head and fuss with it until you find it. So that's an example of three really functional, usable sounds out of one drum, same heads, same wires, just changing the tuning and using your ears to see what it takes to get the heads to work together, to give you something that sounds good, feels good, it's gonna record good and people are gonna remember that and they're gonna call you again.